Montage Memorial Library and Craft Activity Day. Today is Activity 4.1, and if you go to Beanstack, you'll be able to log in if you have set up your account, log in, and then you can get credit for this activity. Now, just remember that Vernon Communications is helping us out this summer, and this is a great partnership. They are taking what we tape and putting it into uh, usable form and you can watch it on YouTube and on their TV channel. Isn't that neat? So today we are going to make this butterfly garland. And I am not going to use paint because I purchased colorful paper plates, which made it super easy. But certainly you can um, purchase white paper plates and paint them up. And that might even be cool because then you could do it to match your room or wherever you're going to put it. So I'm going to check to make sure I have all my supplies. Let's see. You can download this from the Macintosh Memorial Library website and you'll get all the information you need on how to make this. So it says four paper plates. Yep, I've got that. Paint if you need it. I don't. Eight bendable straws. Yep. Um, ribbon or string. Yep, I have it. Decorations. Yep, I have lots of those. And glue. I have my hot glue gun over there um, plugged in. You don't have to use a hot glue gun, but it's a good idea. For me, it's nice to have because it dries so quickly when I'm taping this. It's nice to have it dry quickly rather than have to keep waiting. Um, and then some scissors. I also will always like to have a ruler and pencils and pens on hand just because sometimes you don't always know what you're going to have to measure. So, first thing it says, to make one butterfly, fold a paper plate in half. All right, let's start with the orange one. So I'm going to fold it in half. It's a kind of thick paper plates. Now it says I have to cut out some triangles here, here, and here. So I'm going to draw some triangles. I just don't want to cut too far. I'm going to kind of use some lines that are on the um, paper plates. to give me some good angles. Let's see, I might try to do it a little different today. So now I'm cutting out, and remember, because I haven't cut, folded in half, I'm cutting two sides, so it's a little tricky. So if your hands aren't quite strong enough to do this, then you can just open it up and do it. Ooh, yeah, I think that's gonna be nice. Can't see where my other one went. Um, I'm gonna redraw this one. I think I made it a little big. Now it's good to make it it's a little bit better to make it too small than too big because you can always cut more if you have to. But it's hard to put it back if you cut too much. And I've made one, so I kind of have an idea. There. Ooh, very nice. Which way do you like it? Do you like it with the small cuts on the sides or the bigger cuts on the sides? I think I kind of like it this way. So now we have to do that four times. But what I'm going to do is, so my butterflies are kind of the same, I'm just going to lay this on there and trace it so I know where to cut. And it makes it 
quite a bit faster. And you know, your butterflies don't have to look perfect. Remember, um, you can just make it butterfly-ish, which means just so people can kind of recognize it. Hey, that's a butterfly. You know, and I use different colors, but you don't have to. You could use all the same color if you wanted. And here's the last one. And you know, on these ones, what I did was, I saved some of these pieces and I used them to decorate. If you want to paint, go ahead and do that now before you start decorating. So it says to glue on the straws. So let's see what color looks good where. They don't really show up on there that well, but it looks kind of nice. I kind of like that. Yeah, I'm going to put the orange ones on there. Those will look good on that one. And we'll do that. Awesome. So now it says to just glue them so the bendy parts are up. So this means this is going to be the top of my, um, the head of the butterfly. And I think I am going to do the bigger part there. You see that glue coming out? One thing about glue is hot glue though is you don't get a lot of time to put your stuff on before it dries and hardens. So you want to get them in the right place. It's going to hold it for a little bit. See? Alright, let's do the other orange one next. making sure that my um, bottoms and tops are lined up. Straight, bend, bend so I can kind of see what it's going to look like. Yep. on the middle and you can really tell what it's going to be, can't you? It's kind of interesting that way that 
Doesn't look like much, but a cut up paper plate. And you have one little detail, and you can pretty much tell what somebody's starting to make. Now for the fun part. Now what we get to do is we can decorate these in any way we want. So I have lots of different things. I have some sparkly paper, I have some sequins, I have some little rhinestones. And you know, this is why I always save little pieces of paper, because now I have really colorful, lots of little pieces of colored paper that I can use to decorate. And I haven't wasted the paper, and that's good for our environment. And if you fold a piece of paper in half, you can get two of the same design right away. And this one, I wanted a diamond, so it would look like that on there. And butterflies tend to be symmetrical, which means each half looks the same. And I am totally making this up as I go. I was thinking I might use a little sparkly paper. That would have been a good time to use, um, have two stacked up so that I could make them the same. So cutting around this so I can have two that look similar, not identical, but. And see these little pieces? I'm going to use those. Make two little triangles. Remember, always before you do your crafts, make sure you ask permission, because parents might need to know what you're doing. And don't just take materials, you should always ask first if they're not yours. Seems like we need a little something right there. Maybe a little bit of this one would do it. that kind of fills in that big red space. There. And now, I'm going to glue these on. If you use a hot glue gun, be cautious so you don't get burnt. Then I'll just set that aside 
and work on my other ones. Hot glue tends to stretch, and so you at the end, after it's really dry, you'll have to pull all those little spider webs off of there. So it ends up looking nice. Okay, so after you get all four of your butterflies um, decorated, and do you know how I know these are butterflies? Because if it was a moth, this would be feathery up here, but ours are not. And so that's how I know they're butterflies. And now I'm kind of thinking, hmm, what order do I want to put these in? Kind of like the two orange ones at the end. But now I'm going to have to spread out. So I'm going to make sure I pick up all of these sequins so they don't end up on the floor. And then I have to pick them all up and sweep them all up. That would be a hassle. So I'm going to just move all of my decorations out of the way. Just plunk them down over here. But I am going to need the scissors again and maybe my root. Because now what we're going to do is flip our butterflies over and kind of think, how far do I want these apart? I put mine fairly close together. And if you make them get really wide, you'll need a really big space. So I'm kind of lining up the middles here. And you need, it's better to take too much of this than not enough. And let's see. Maybe about three arm lengths will be good. And do a little bit more just in case. And now I'm going to fold this in half. Because what I want to do is I need, this is the middle of my design. So that's where the middle needs to be. So I'm going to tape that down right there and then work from there. All right, so I'm gonna tape that down. So now I know where my middle is. And then I'm gonna hold that there and I'm gonna add quite a bit of glue. And you know, you can even tape this, I'll show you couple of ways that you can do this. And your glue sticks will work for all of these things. So you can also just take this part down. But you want to make sure your tape isn't going to show and you want it to be sturdy enough right there. That's looking good. Again, down the middle of it. And I always like to put quite a bit on top of it. Because it kind of gives it a little strength. Because it will get tugged and pulled. Something I thought would be really cool to do with this if you had a string of lights to go with it, some of those really tiny little twinkle lights and kind of wrap it in between here, I thought that would be really pretty in your room at night. to dry. And I had two um, places already ready to go to hang mine, but you could hang it in a window, 
you could stretch it um, outside in a um, three season porch. You can hang it just over a window right there for the summer. outside. We're going to learn some new sidewalk chalk games and I can't wait to see your pictures that you post on Beanstack, how your butterfly garland turned out. That's something really cool that you can do on Beanstack. If you go up to post a review and then they'll show you a picture review, it shows that it's about a book but you can post a picture just about this and just in the title right, Butterfly Garland, and then I will get to see how your Butterfly Garland turned out, even though I'm not with you. So, until tomorrow, thanks for watching.